Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to another signal processing tutorial. In today's video, we're going to detail some understanding behind convolution and the impulse response. So let's get started. Firstly, if you're watching this, I hope you're somewhat familiar with either of these terms. If you're not though, that's okay. Hopefully this should explain things for you. Firstly, we have our impulse response. So when we're talking about digital footers, all of our data that we're talking about for our input or output is all discrete values. So on our time scale, they're always point, point, point. Now when we're talking about the impulse response of a system, let's say that we have some sort of input here, let's call it x of n, and then we have a system. So our system could either be a circuit, or it could be a computer program, and then for our output, we'll have y of n. Okay. So when we're talking about how our system is changing our input signal, the best way to do this is by talking about the system's impulse response. If we think of X as just multiple impulses as we have here, we can calculate how the system will respond to a specific impulse of X, and then we can extrapolate that to see how it will respond to any impulse of X. So what we do is we calculate the impulse response, which is the system's response to a unit impulse. In other words, at time zero, we have a pulse of one, and then every other time in that is zero. And we pass this into our system, and then we get out our impulse response. Our impulse response details how the system will respond to a single unit input. And because we know how it responds to this, we can extrapolate how it will react to any future samples. And this leads nicely into convolution. Convolution can be used to filter a signal, or in other words, it can be used to show how an input signal will be modified as it's passed through the system. We write convolution in the form as follows. We have x of n, and then convolution is denoted by a star. This can be a little tricky if you're doing programming, uh, which is often denotes multiplication. And then our impulse response, which is given by h, of n, and then that's equal to our output, y of n. And this is the entire logic behind convolution. So convolution is a mathematical operation just in the same way as addition is, or subtraction, or multiplication, or integration. Essentially, in addition, all you do is you take one number, you add it to another number, and then you get out a number from it. In convolution, we add in a signal, we convolve it with another signal, and then we get out a signal. And this whole process here is simply simulating how the system would modify our signal as it was being passed through. So what can convolution be used for? Well, typically convolution isn't always used that much in signal processing because it's easier for us to take the Fourier transform and then do some simple multiplication and then take the inverse Fourier transform to put the signals back into the time domain. However, convolution can still accomplish many neat tricks. For instance, you can use convolution to create a high pass filter, or you can use it to create a low pass filter, or you can use it to calculate the derivative of an input signal. The effects of convolution are only limited by the impulse response that you can calculate for a system. And then once you can calculate this impulse response, you can model a system on that and expect any data that is passed through to be modified in the exact same way as the impulse response that was calculated. Okay guys, I know this one was another quick one. Thanks for watching. I hope that you got a little bit of basic understanding of what convolution is. In the next video, we are going to go through an example of this, which again will be very similar to the correlation that we've done previously, and it's not great to do on your own. It's probably best for a computer, but we'll go through the process behind it. I feel that knowing the reason behind we're doing the convolution and what an impulse response is, is probably the most important part of this. If you know what your system's doing that you're creating, it'll help get a better understanding of how to apply this knowledge in future problems which you may have. As always, if you had any problems at all, feel free to let me know with a comment down below and I'll get back to you and I'll see you guys in the next one.